all scripture is given by inspiration of the creator and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in all righteousness that the man truly furnish unto all good works bless moment shabbat shalom again to sit before you on another sabbath won't take it for granted it's because of his mercies towards me while i'm here and for that i want to be grateful today i just want to welcome you to another sabbath session and as you join as we often like to say feel free to share this live broadcast on your page share to friends share to families share to co-workers share to as much and as many people that you are able to share to and if there if there's somebody or more than one person joining for the first time today i want to specially welcome you thank you for tuning in this is a place where we seek to come together using the word of the creator and as i read earlier you know the bible was given to us for inspiration for rebuke for reproof for doctrine so that we as people who are seeking to apply and live for the creator we can do it in all and for those who have always been coming on thank you for your continued support and remember together we are seeking to bring the gospel all over the world we give him thanks again and we give him praise for another sabbath now we have really been looking at a very important topic we have dig deep in it for the past couple of weeks and just to do a quick recap who is the creator and what is he capable of doing one might ask the question why is it that you know you are spending so long on this very subject or topic but as I said before, or during the course of the weeks that we have been on it, this is something that is very deep and wide and no one session, you know, and no matter how much session I do, I don't think I'll be able to cover everything about knowing who the creator is and what he's capable of doing. But we want to dig and do enough so that we'll be able to do what he commands us to do because if we don't know someone we cannot obey trust and do anything that they have asked of us and it's that with the creator he has given his commandments his principles his ordinances and he wants us to follow them so we want to dig deep to find out who is the creator do we truly know him and these are questions that we have been asking over the course of these weeks now of course we have been looking at words like you know assessing ourselves and checking out ourselves and we want to continue to look because as i said before many a times we think we know ourselves and many a times we think we know someone but we don't truly know we only are acquainted so we want to continue to do self-evaluation we want to continue to do stock taking and we want to continue to do inventory you might be saying what these terms what does they have to do with being a believer or someone who is chasing after the creator it is important it is important for us to evaluate ourselves daily it's important for us to do stock taking assess our lives check out our lives to see if what we are saying that we are a part of or what we are saying that we know we are really a part of it for real and we really know and understand we want to continue to evaluate ourselves to see if the spirit of the creator the holy spirit the, the comforter that was promised that it is in us and if it is not in us as the bible said if the spirit of christ is not in us then we are none of his so we have to continue to do self-evaluation stock taking check the inventory of your soul of your own life see if 
Christ is in you. See if the Holy Spirit fills your heart. See if the characteristics are the principles that is given to us. See that, see that if these things are in us, the love, the joy, the, 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 the brother's keeper, the forbearance, all these things that the Bible speaks of and we, we read about in the Bible and we talk and we preach about. See if these things are a part of our lives. It's important for us to evaluate ourselves. James 1, 23 to 25 says, For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man behold his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgeteth what manner of man he was. But also looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue bearing he being not forgetful, being a, a forgetful era, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So the Bible is showing us that we should be hearers of the word. <coughs> but it went further and said we should not be only hearers of the word, doers of the word. That's why again I say daily we have to evaluate ourselves and see if what we are preaching, what we are teaching, what we are hearing, and what we are reading from the scriptures, if we are only hearing it, are we applying it? Are we doing what the Bible says? You know, when I was seeking to prepare, you know, to sit and talk before you another Sabbath, last week, last Sabbath, you know, I started looking into what are the signs or the evidence or the characteristics of someone who knows the Creator. And I wanted to dive into it. But somehow when I was preparing, some things kept on coming up in my heart. I must take my time today and let us, you know, reason and don't rush this. Because as I said, it is deep. <coughs> there are many things that my mother over the years has been talking to me about many things and there are two of them that I want to bring our attention to today there are many things that this woman would speak in my own heart and spirit and my other siblings and of course all her friends and everyone who knows her knows how much She's about the word. She's about the creator. She's about anine. This is somebody who the creator has sent from heaven. Filled with anointing and power. Gifts and ability. Seeking to touch lives. Seeking to deposit the word. And every single day. I hear this woman speak the word of the creator. Time and time again. Hearing me this morning. I want to say to her publicly that. What you are doing is not in vain. You know. I myself may have disappointed you and of course your other sib my other siblings and others but you minister in the word daily that is your responsibility and the creator has given his word to you and you pass it on to many of us and I want to tell you today publicly while the world is listening they are not, they are not going in vain you are playing your part and your part is to minister the word I have come into an understanding more and more that all the things that you have been seeking to teach me and others over the years they are so much of a reality they are so important they are really life-changing and sometimes we get caught up frustrated and don't understand and because we don't understand we don't realize what through the spirit you are seeking to do to us and many others i want to say to you today mummy strengthen yourself and know that the creator is with you and you are doing a great work two things i want to point out that she's always saying i just read about being not only hearers of the word but also doers and the bible says someone who hear the word you are like someone who go before a mirror and when you forget the word you forget who you are the state that you are in but someone who applies the word hear the word and put the word into action the Bible says a blessing, that person will be blessing his ways. 
And it is important for us to understand who the creator is, what he's capable of doing, and understand his word through the spirit, how important it is to function in this capacity. Now, two things I want to point out that, as I said, many things has been spoken or taught to me. Some of them, sometimes I think that I get it, but more and more I realize that when you think you understand and you think you get it, life shows you that you don't get it as you believe. And that's why I keep on coming Sabbath after Sabbath recently and trying to get people to understand that. Don't think that you know it to the point where you don't know it because you're only deceiving yourself. We can believe that we really have something in us or, or we know something, but we truly don't know because our actions, our reactions, the way how we go about dealing with things show or proves if the creator is in us. Now, this woman is somebody who the creator is up and who the creator uses, ministers to. But here's one thing that I always hear she says. When I'm around her or if I'm far from her, no matter what, on the phone, wherever, she always say, I examine myself daily. I check myself daily. I check to see if this creator who I'm talking about, this creator who I always talk to you about and talk to others about, I check to see if this is a creator that is in me or if I am filled with his spirit or, or if there is another spirit that is operating in me. I always hear she mention these words. And for personally, I don't know what passed through others' mind, but for myself, I would always be there and I would think, and I would say, if this person is so filled like what I see with my eyes and I hear in my ears and I watch her every day is if this person who I see operating under this and living what she utters according to the word of the creator and through the spirit if she every single day I hear her talking like this then I start looking into myself and say whoa but now I'm coming into an understanding how important it is to, uh, to evaluate yourself and check yourself to see if Christ is in you or the spirit of the creator is in you or if you truly know the creator or not why am I putting so much emphasis on these things because I realize that there is something out there called deception where you can think the Bible says if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing he is deceiving himself and the truth is not in him I always hear this woman say I am checking myself I am assessing myself daily. When you see me walk around, I whisper to myself and I check daily. I communicate, I watch myself. When I go into my room in the night, I check myself to see how I operate throughout the day. Did my actions, my reactions, my attitude, my answers, were they what depict what the scripture says? Were, they, were, were, were my actions and all the things that I do of the creator? Did it show, did it represent someone who is a do of the word or someone just hear and leave the word. And she's always talking like this. And now I'm understanding how important it is to every single day evaluate, take stock, check yourself. Because you can really believe that you know the creator and you don't know. Another point that she always make and many people can attest to this. She's always asking this question. Are you planted by the rivers of living water? And you know, I think it's Psalms chapter 1 that says, If you are planted by the rivers of water, your life should represent a life that brings forth fruits in and out of season. And of course, it went further to say, Whatever you do will prosper. She's always asking the question. She's always saying, Check your life. Is your life a representation of someone who is planted by the rivers of living water? And again, I am coming into an understanding to see how important it is. Today I want you to ask yourself the question, as my mother would always ask me and many others this question. Is my life a representation of someone who is planted by the rivers of living water am i depicting signs of someone who sit 
in the council of the ungodly? Is my action a representation of those who are not of the creator? What are my What is my life representing? Check yourself for a moment. Again, I come back this week and I say evaluate yourself. Don't get weary. I want you to tell yourself or tell somebody in your own soul. Don't get weary. Because we are talking about our souls. We are talking about checking ourselves to see if what we are talking about really makes sense. Because the Bible is showing us that we can hear the word. I can sit here and preach. Even though the Bible says Christ must be preached. The Messiah must be preached. Yes. But of course I don't just want to sit here and preach. And I say this almost every week. I want to apply the things that I am saying to you. I want to apply it to my own life. I want you to question yourself today. Is my life a representation of someone who truly knows the creator? Is my life a representation of someone who is planted by the rivers of living water? Is everything that I am doing prosperous? Am I producing fruits in and out of season? Inventory. Self-evaluation. Stop taking it touching the mind bringing awareness for us to check ourselves as i said last week you can be going to church for all your life many years preach sing dance drop speak in tongues cast out devils do all of these things and at the end don't even have a relationship with the creator we have to continue to evaluate ourselves i want to tell somebody today <coughs> That serving the creator is not a next Netflix series. You might be saying, where is this man going today? Serving the creator is not a Netflix series. You know, everybody or most people, let me put it this way, is watching Netflix now. Most people have a Netflix account and watch different movies and all kind of things that is on it. But serving the creator is not a Netflix series. It's not a prime movie. It's not a YouTube channel. It's not Facebook. Serving the creator is not Hollywood. Knowing the creator and what he's capable of doing is not a Dali House, Hollywood, Facebook channel and, and all of these things. Serving the creator is not a Google search because many people have gotten caught up now in searching Google, seeking to find out who the creator is and then they come back with many and sound knowledgeable sound like full of understanding i am saying to you today as i speak to you my viewers i speak to myself deception is real you can deceive yourself i can deceive myself and many people out there can deceive you how can you and i stop deception is for us to come into a true understanding of who the creator is and knowing him for ourselves personally knowing him and know how he operates when i was growing up as a young man coming up to adulthood of course you grew up in church and many of you listening to me today i'm sure you have grew up in church and for those who haven't you hear about the creator someplace I personally used to believe, and I think I've said this before, but I'm going to repeat it. <coughs> I used to believe that knowing the creator and serving him was just to pray, read your Bible, worship, make sure that you go to church and don't miss no service whatsoever. And I was committed to all of this. I used to go in the bushes to pray and worship as a youth, seeking the creator. Now I want you to get it straight. These things are important. But I used to think that these are only things that, you know, you do. You read your Bible, you pray, 
you pay your tithes and your offering, you go to church, as I said, you don't miss any service. And of course, you used to hear, don't commit adultery, don't commit fornication. And these were things that were drenched into young people. That time, almost every service you go, and even if the preacher didn't preach about these things, some elder in the church would come and they would say, young man, young woman, make sure you're not mixing up in fornication and all of these things. As I said, it's not that these things are not important and that they are not a part of the package. But serving the creator, coming into an understanding of who the creator is, is far more than just these things. To me, those things were, though they are important, it's like they were trending because that's what you were hearing. And in today's day and age, you know what is trending and what is out there and what is cause, causing a lot of deception. And many people coming up now that, that saying that they know the creator and that they have a relationship with him. They believe that if you are not doing these things, you are not saved. And I point out a few. If you are not prophesying, if you are not a prophet or a prophetess, if you are not a first lady, and you don't have names with a lot of names behind it, you know, doctorate, bishop this, pastor this, all of these names. Sometimes when you go on social media and you look on profile, you see, some some even name that is behind and I'm and I'm not, I'm not here to condemn anyone I'm just bringing awareness clarity a better understanding because I want us to really realize that we can be really going around and following trends and following things that are happening and don't know that it is the enemy who is at work to, to cause us to go in a state where we think that we understand and know and don't know that we are deceiving ourselves so the new thing is everyone wants big name a lot of things behind the name but when you study the bible these great men that we constantly preach teach and talk about were these men going around with all kind of accolades behind their name sometimes these men didn't even want people to know who they were the messiah many times after doing miracles and signs and all kind of things before people who would tell them healing and deliverance would tell them don't tell anyone that's that's that, that that i did this these people nowadays they want everyone to see them in all their glory does these people represent people who are connected and truly know the creator when you look into the bible for yourself is this a representation of someone who truly knows the creator Remember, you know, we're evaluating ourselves. We're checking ourselves to see if we know. We want to really realize whether we know or not. You know that there are some people in the Bible, and we call them scribe, Pharisees, and Sadducees. These men believed that they knew who the Creator was. That they had a relationship with Him, and they understand how He operated because they studied the law. They studied the Bible. They thought they knew <coughs> who the creator was. And you couldn't tell them anything otherwise. So that's why when the Messiah came and he was functioning, these men had problem with him because they didn't know that it was the spirit that was in operation because what was happening was not what they, they knew of. They were, they were all hell-bent and into studying and nothing to do with the spirit. That's why I keep coming week after week and asking the question, do we truly know who the creator is and what he's capable of doing? Have we truly come in contact with him? Do we truly know him for ourselves? Because when we know who the creator is, there are things that we will do and things we will not do. There's a set of people today who don't know that the Messiah came and gone and is looking to come back at the appointed time. He alone, and the creator alone, the father alone knows that. But there are a set of people who <coughs> is here today, well committed to their craft and what they are doing. They believe that the Messiah has not come yet. And the Messiah came, died, rose again, gone, and is looking to come back. And they are still here waiting. You know why? Because why am I coming week after week saying this? Because you can trick yourself. Do you know that you can be filled with mess? Let me make it blunt and plain. You can full of shit and think you are clean. You can be walking around with 
mess all over you and think that you are clean. You can be someone who is so fake and believe that you know and you understand and you're walking around so fictitious and fake in your in your thoughts, in your actions, in your reactions, and you think that you're, you're a certain type of person. I want to bring your, your heart and your mind to a place today to understand that sometimes when you go on Facebook and other social media means where people are said it, people declaring that they're preaching and all of this you'll see many times <coughs> sorry people asking for prayer or asking for all kind of favor and you'll see many people sending in requests people mm. genuinely want help from the creator but you see when you don't know who the creator is and how he operates this is how you behave that's why it is important to know the creator. That's why it's important to have a personal relationship. That's why it's important. When one knows the creator, there are things that will do and will not do. When you know, Some will call darkness light and light darkness. When you don't know how the creator operates, you will call darkness light and light darkness darkness the almighty master and maker of the universe will be operating remember we said he's all knowing and he's all seeing he will be operating and because we don't know that it is him all right watch this saul in the old testament was rejected by the creator Samuel kept on praying and going to the creator because he got an instruction Saul to destroy a set of people and everything that they had and he did not obey what was said to him to the full and as a result of that, he brought the wrath and judgment of the creator on his life. Remember last week we look at the creator is not just compassionate and merciful, but he's also someone who judges and is full of justice and he's just. Samuel was praying, asking the creator, going to the creator about the matter. And he said, I've rejected him. Why continue to come and pray? You might be saying, sometimes... Sometimes we have to check ourselves if we don't know the creator and understand how his spirits operate. There are things that the creator wants us to leave and we are there mingling in it the same way and don't understand that we are creating problems. Not, not, not only that creating problem, but we're actually fighting against the creator. You know what? You know what the Bible says? An evil spirit from the creator went and that spirit was tormenting this man. An evil spirit. That's what the Bible says, you know. What is this? This is the same creator we are talking about who is merciful and compassionate. But if we don't know how he operates, we will not even know that he... Remember, you know, I said, you know, in, in Colossians, you know, all things were created by him, and by him all things consist. Thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers, all these things. So the creator has power over everything. If we don't know that, when the creator is operating, we will not know how he operates so we're evaluating ourselves and we're looking into how the creator operates now today i want to read from romans 9 and i'm going to read it and we go through a few verses and conclude today we want to evaluate ourselves as we look into this chapter and we want to see if if this is the creator that you and i talking about every day like we know <coughs> Romans 9 from verse 10 to 18 and not only this but when Rebecca also had conceived by one even by our father Isaac for the children being not yet born neither having done any good or evil that the purpose of the creator according to election might stand 
not of works, but of him that call it. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Creator? The Creator forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy, and whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion, and whom I will have compassion. So then, it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of the Creator that showeth mercy. For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show forth your power, my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore, had he mercy on whom he will, and whom he will, he harden it. <coughs> now, this is a chapter, and if you look in, in the book of Malachi, you see these verses. There was a prophecy. There was a promise. And we know the story. Sarah. Abraham. Now. Rebecca. Was pregnant. She had two. Babies in her home. The Bible says the creator love one and ate the other. Is the same the creator we're talking about? The Bible says these babies were not yet born. None of them did good or evil. But the Bible says he loved one and ate the other. But watch this. The creator who is all knowing knew that he had chosen Jacob who later on would be his name would change to Israel that he was the one who was going to lead the Israelites or out of him the children of Israel was going to come and he knew that Esau the descendants the Edomite was going to be the descendants of Esau and of course they had the blessing of the creator for a period of time but they fought again and fight against Israel so the creator who is all knowing all seeing who is the mastermind behind everything said I love one and I hate the other if you don't know that the creator is like this when things are happening in your life when things happening in my life I'll not be able to function Many times I have seen over the years things that were spoken or things that I've come to learn and see how the creator works. But too often I get, uh, let me put it blunt and, and straightforward, fail in the regard of understanding and, and knowing how the creator operates to know how to act. And know to react to whatever situation I find myself in. As a believer, when you study the Bible, that's why I said it is important to know the Creator. You and I will be tested every single day. That's how, when you check the Bible, that's how the Bible operates. We all will be tested to see if what we believe, what we profess, if we mean it or not. And many times we fail because we do not know how the Creator operates. If I know that I'm serving a creator who does what pleases him or the creator who sees and knows, then I'll know that everything that I do, he will see. So therefore, there are things that automatically I will not do because I know that the one who is watching over me, who is able to destroy not only my body, but my soul is seen. And the Bible said that clear in Matthew. Fear that who is able to destroy the physical man, but fear who can destroy both physical and spiritual the soul come on so if we know if we know that we are serving a creator who sees and can destroy not only body but spirit then we'll know that there are certain things we'll not do we'll not do things to offend him we'll we'll obey his word that's why i said if you love me you keep my commandments and last week we looked at the creator is light and in him there's no darkness so if he's light and if we are of the light the bible said if you're of the light you will 
do his commandment. So if we are not doing that, it simply means that we don't know him. So the Bible says the elder shall serve the younger. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Verse 13, not my words, it's the Bible. So the question was asked, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the creator? And the big answer is, the creator forbid. He does what pleases him. This life is about the creator. He is all powerful. He is almighty. He is infinite. He is great. And we declare these things. But do we know for a fact that these things are real? He does what pleases him. The creator, as I said last week, don't owe us anything. He can do whatever he wants to do with us. That's why it is important for us to know and subject ourselves to his doing. Subject ourselves to, 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 to how he wants us to live and operate. Everyone have different calling, of course. But it's important for us to know him for ourselves. So is there unrighteousness with the creator? No way. He's in charge. That's why when Job went up in his face, he said, Job, where were you? I said that last week. You know what it says in verse 15? <coughs> for I said to Moses, I will have mercy. And whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion. And whom I will have compassion. Are we serving a creator who have mercy and whom he choose to have mercy? This is what Romans 9 verse 15 is saying. The creator declare that I have mercy. That's what he said to Moses. I have mercy and whom I want to have mercy on. I have compassion and who I want to have compassion on. So today, because you're alive, understand that it's because the creator has had mercy and compassion towards you. It's not because you're good. It's not because I am good. It's because he has had mercy upon you. He decides, he chooses to have mercy upon you. Stop going around and thinking that you have come from the right family or because you have done well or you are good. It's because the creator has decided to have mercy on you. For this particular time. And when his mercy run out. And his compassion on you and I. Then we all know what is going to happen. So the Bible says. So it is not of him that will it. Nor of him that run it. But of the creator that show it mercy. So as I said it has nothing to do with us. It's not what you do. It's a creator in his own heart. Decide to have mercy on us. And if he choose not to have mercy. Then of course we should seek to have a right heart before him. So that he can be merciful to us. I'm not saying that you should go around and do anything you want to do. Let me make sure we make that clear. Live according to his word so that he can have mercy on you and me. For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose, I have raised thee up, that I may show my power in thee. We know the story with Pharaoh and the children of Israel. The Bible says, the creator declared that for this purpose, Pharaoh was risen up for this particular purpose. Do you know that when you study the Bible, there were many Pharaohs, or more than one Pharaoh, let me put it that way, before this Pharaoh who fought against the children of Israel. There were pharaohs who were inclined and in line with what the children of Israel was doing. And the children of Israel found favor with those pharaohs. But this pharaoh, the creator, hardened his heart so that he could show forth his power. He rose his pharaoh up so that he can show that he was almighty, all-powerful, great. And he does what pleases him. Even if pharaoh wanted to let the people go before that appointed time. He could not do it. Because the creator had hardened his heart. Study the Bible for yourself. I'm just saying this to show you. That it is important for you and I to know. The creator who we go around talking about. And understand how he operates. So that we can be able to function in our daily walk. Sometimes the creator will be dealing with. Your child or your children, your husband or your wife, your co-worker, whoever. It is important to know 
Is this the spirit of the creator operating or is it another spirit? There are some things that you should pray against and there are some things that you should leave for the creator to do. But if you don't know him and know how he operates, you will not know. And sometimes we embrace things and don't know that it is the creator who is at work. And when we join and support or, 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 or start doing things with this person or this situation, we, we're fighting against the creator and don't even know. Are you hearing me today? These things that I'm talking is deep. It's, it's real deep spiritual things. If you don't know the creator, you'll not know how he operates. And then you and I will find ourselves in big trouble, even fighting against the creator and don't know because we don't know how he operates. So can you imagine the creator beating someone because he says, who I love I chasten. And your dear don't know that it is the creator that is in operation. And then you go there mingling in what the creator is doing you see why i said that this thing called serving the creator is not hollywood and dalios it is serious do you know that we go around daily and get ourselves in trouble with the creator and it's because his mercy and his compassion and he chose to have mercy while many of us are not destroyed yet but for how long is he going to be merciful and compassionate? It's important for us to know him and know how he operates so that, so, so that we can function accordingly. Function according to his word. So he wears fear up to show forth his power and his glory. And you know the story throughout all the earths. Signs and wonders were done because fear art was hard. Fear had to fight against the children of Israel. For the power and the glory that we preach, teach about, read about, to be on display, fear of heart had to be hardened. Understand how the Creator operates. Do we know that this Creator is who we are talking about? Therefore, had He mercy on whom He will, and whom He will, He harden it. So the Bible is showing us clearly <coughs> that the Creator can harden your heart and He can have mercy on, on you. He can have compassion on you. He can destroy you. He does <clears throat> what pleases him. So today, we evaluate ourselves again. We talk about inventory earlier. We talk about stock taking. And again, we use this verse a lot. Examine yourself. Prove. If the Messiah is in you. And as I said. Always here. I'm checking myself to see. If the creator is in me. Now I am coming into an understanding. Why. These things were often mentioned. In my presence. And even when. I'm not there. And I get a chance to communicate. These are things that are often mentioned. Why am I putting emphasis on these things. Why do I keep coming back and talking about checking yourself and evaluating yourself? For years, you go around and think that you know the Creator. As I said, I thought not committing fornication and adultery and other things was it. But I find out to serve the Creator is far more than that. Because you cannot... You can do all of that that I mentioned earlier. As I thought I knew when I was growing up. And still, I've never come into contact with the true and living creator. Because if you don't do it in the spirit, I remember we looked at that. If not last week, the week before. In order to connect and come in contact with the true and living source, the creator, the master and maker of the universe, it has to be done through the spirit. Again, as Paul declared, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. I want to know him and know how he operates. And not only be hearer of what I'm hearing or preaching, but doer. I leave this with you today. I said it earlier. Emphasis again. Is my life a representation of someone 
who is planted by the rivers of living water. Check and see. We see for ourselves how the Creator operates. He has mercy and who he wants to have mercy. He has compassion. He hardens. Two things we realize. More things we realize, sorry, today. Or this creator that we talk about operates. When I check my own life, there are many things I realize that don't represent someone that is planted by the rivers of living water. And I want to get it right. I want my fruits that I produce to be blessing, prosperity, prosperous. And it to not only to do it or represent for just a particular period of time or for a season, but in and out of season. I want my actions, my reactions, my thoughts, my imagination, the words that comes out of my mouth to be in and out of season in a Christ-like manner. Today again, I thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining. I'm only putting emphasis on these things because I have come into an understanding of how important and serious this life that we go around talking about is. And it's not about talking. It's about doing, applying what the Creator says. Check yourself. Are you planted by the rivers of living water? Have a wonderful Sabbath. Remember to continue to support this channel. Continue to get the word out there as you seek to spread the gospel to bring reality and to use the word for what it is. Thank you again for joining in today. Have a wonderful Sabbath.